Hello, hello, Star Voyagers. Welcome back. Star. The weekend now. Where we're going. I think I know where we left off. Not exactly where we are, but where we're going. So, we weren't, we haven't finished the rescue of Itamen, have we? I think that's what we're caught up in. dustier than I expected. <laughs> ha. Ha, ha. Oh, that's cute. We left off next to a rock breaker site. To Huadiv. That related to, yeah, rescuing Itamin. If we cleared a path for Nasadi and Itamin, as Vanasha asked. Alright, there we are. That's what we'll be doing. And killing a lot of little critters for their fatty meat. Try going down Quad Eve first. But I guess that means we're fighting rock breakers. That's how we're starting off. Good direction to run. That's right, Bunny. Go towards the rock breakers. I will leave you be. Oh, 
machine saw me. Which ones? Rock breakers again? Shit. Built-in seismometers, or something like that. Half the party. Oh man. All right. I want to fight a rock breaker. So a smart guy came up behind the rock with me. It's good. Sort of. Take forever! This is not what we're here for. It's a great spot to fight them from, but this would take forever. Are they moving past it or are they staying to fight? Pretty 
AC Greenlander. Hello. <laughs> That's cool. It's on ultra hard, but I have played through it before. Oh, come on. Resources are insane, that's true. Especially for fighting large things like this. Rock breakers. It's, it's all hooked up. Uh, actually, not that. I haven't put any in that, but all my other bows are sp pretty specked out for what I want. Nevertheless, good. Alien King, what's up? Hey, hey. Well, what do we have here? Hey, crazy. Thank you for the follow. Welcome aboard. Cheers. That's where my corruption arrows usually are. Out of habit, crafting in that slot. How are we doing on wood? Pretty good. Toad Muadib. Something like that. Muadib. I can't spare the weight. For potions? Mock me. You're three Toad Muadib, right? Vanasha sent me. What happened? I got hornswoggled, that's what. 
Vanasha batted her lashes, wiggled her hips, and promised us treasure. Clear a path for the royals, she said. Sneak past the garrison and skewer a few watches. Hardly a bother. Little did we know there was a damned monstrosity lurking underground. When will I learn not to gawk at skinny girls? That's a hell of a thing. <laughs> Something attacked you from underground. Oh, you picked that up, did you? I wondered why the Shadow Kaja didn't pay attention to the pass. Well, they don't need to. A rock-eating demon guards it for them. Two down. It tunnels in the dirt, I know. breaks through the earth, Got and it. blasts rocks from its stinking face. It's dead. I barely escaped. My comrades weren't so lucky. <laughs> I might shed a tear if they weren't all cutthroats and cheers. So you're going to respawn them? Because they're dead. So Vanasha needed safe passage for Nasadi and Itaman, but it didn't work out? She made it sound so sweet and easy. Find the best path to the lake, make sure it's safe. What could go wrong? Turns out, a lot. Like bloody murder in the grinding jaws of a heinous death beast. Why do you think Vanasha swindled you? My crew came to Sunfall because we heard the bounties were fat. She offered us the fattest one of all, enough to retire on. It's my own damn fault for taking the bait. Should have known I'd end up with a rupture in my useful parts. Vanasha will be here soon with Nasadi and Itaman. I've got to destroy that thing in the past before they arrive. You're not too bright, are you? Well... We didn't last long against it, but I'll tell you what I know. It has armor everywhere, a little less at the rear. And when it goes underground, it will lose track of you if you're quiet. You Not might even be difficulty. able to keep it from going under altogether if you hit its big crooked arms hard enough. That's all I can offer, friend. I promise to look solemn at your funeral before I hit the bar. Basically right about the arms, though. Do it. Big enough, he won't. At least, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Jeter.
Come on! Hey, Eva! How you doing? Hope you're doing all right today. I'm striking out. Oh, come on, I just lose that too quick. So about that. It's not happening, is it? I'm not gonna get it. It's gonna die before I get it. some blaze on for when it works it works I actually put it on Nice work, Aloy. No, it's still expensive. Nice, Eva. At least we only had to fight one of them again. I don't know if the Blazon even helped there. It really was an explosion. I don't know if it would have set us on fire. No fun to wear. See, what you do is, you pretend. By the radiant sun, I can't believe it. I thought that evil rock jewel would grind you up. Uh, it did. After bit. that miracle, all we can do is wait. Benasha will be here soon, along with a boat that'll take the royals across the lake. Ah! 
Ah, little huntress. Glad you accepted my invitation to play bodyguard. Where are your men, Huadiv? It looks like something chewed you up and spat you out. That's pretty much exactly what happened. The way is clear. Can we go? I like how you always cut to the chase. In this case, literally. It won't be long before we're followed. Don't be afraid, Meridians. We've got excellent protection. Oh dear, here come the Shadow Carger, and they're very angry with me. I'll hold them off. Very noble of you, but when I start a fuss, I like to finish it. Not that your assistant isn't welcome. Khwadiv, get Itaman and his mother to the shore, carefully. So it comes to this. I must say, after two years under the heel of these zealots, I'm ready to extract a little blood. Some traps would be nice. What kind of traps do you want? Problem is, if you lay out a whole bunch of traps, they start to despawn. And they sit there too long, they start to despawn. So, I don't know. We'll put the traps down on the fly if we can when the shit hits the fan. And done. Done? Okay, I guess we're done. Called it done. They're not even in a good position. I don't know where things are gonna be useful here. We'll see. Take cover up there, behind that rock. Say so. You know what would be useful would be a rock breaker. I mean, they wouldn't know what the hell to do with it. He stabilized used to it. Can we bring a rock breaker during this fight by trying to search that pile during the fight? Here they are. Let's make it hurt, shall we? I had a blaze tank, and he did, but I guess it didn't matter. Oh, children, this Wild shot. Yeah, but that one is right Whoa. where I'm... Oh, you had to! Not done. Kill Steeler. More of the bastards. Get ready. me we only fall back <laughs> for a bot
Looks good. I think they repopulated the area with a lot of medicinals. I don't remember there being all of these before the fight. And yet, not enough. Ever enough. Like she's plucking one petal per plant. Still can't pick up my old traps. Jinx it. A bit late, aren't we, gentlemen? Sorry, ma'am. The boat's waiting. Damn, I spoke too soon. This one's mine. Get to the boat. You know, this time I think I might be out of my league. If anything happens to her, I will be very cross. We're not going anywhere. The corrupted rock breaker. Well, it's a good thing we had a warm up of. No, it's the. Okay. Corrupted Thunderjaw. Eh, what's the difference? It's a little stronger. It didn't tear off even one gun yet. Calm, calm. Shit. It's just not what we need. It's just not what we need. Lose both guns. No. Ah.
I saw the comment about the fire arrows. out of room. <laughs> we'll make room for that. a fun fight. <laughs> uh, yeah, fire arrows would be arguably more cost efficient. At least corrupted weak to fire. That's something. these for the trail won't save them for long Tuck that away. Not exactly a royal barge, is it? Oh well, defectors can't be choosers. Let's get aboard, shall we?
yeah. Whew. Threw some stuff at us. You've done a good thing. Maybe even ended a war. Maybe. But my war just keeps going. You have nothing to fear. You are now under the protection of the Sundom. My protection. As is your mother, she will not be harmed. You have my word, the law of the sun. Aloy, it seems I see your influence everywhere. You've done so much for the Sundom, and it will always be appreciated. You have my thanks. May you walk in the light. Appalling. I spent two years in the Forbidden West setting this up, and the redhead gets all the credit? I'm still getting paid, right? You'll be lucky if I let you live. I couldn't have done this without you. When we meet again, I'll give you a proper thanks, I promise. Yeah, I mean, we, we might end up using it some this playthrough. But I don't have it yet. I got confused about the number of power cells. I thought we just needed, you know, three. We need needed five. I, I don't know why I didn't remember that correctly so we currently have two of the three but we've already you know used four and uh we'll definitely get it definitely get it when um won't cost you a shard just up another power cell in fact where do we get the next power cell is it down in the zero dawn facility where we're probably going to go today i want to deselect it for now Merchant, though, yay! All right, so let's talk bows just for a second. Got the corruption bow. They don't have that spec for frost. They do have a sling spec for frost, right? Yeah. Got the blast sling spec for damage. Rope caster. Never really did much with the trip caster. Just haven't been using it. I did, had to upgrade it for something. For some reason. When we were doing hunting lodge stuff just to get into the lodge. Hunting ground stuff to get into the lodge. Uh, so, you know, I sort of mixed this. Tear and damage. I always wondered if I wanted to get two and make one a tear bow and one just a damage bow. But I'm happy enough with it. Never decided what to do with this. Do we want to spec it for damage or for fire? Since we were talking about fire, have mods, we can definitely do this. Fire and damage. Freeze, fire and ice, that's just not gonna matter that they go together. It's a weird roll, but it's still our 
That's the value. So. Sharp shot is your damage weapon, and hunter is fire. So that's basically what we've got, right? Um, sharp shot, I've got a damage tear because I use so many tear blast arrows, and that sound effect is one of my favorite in games, period. So, tear everything I can as long as I have enough echo shells. So yeah, we'll spec the hunter bow for fire. Be good. But I don't use the fire that much. I use the corruption a lot more. Just for moving around and distracting things ways. and picking fights. And... get another Thunderjaw heart. Do we need any animal parts? We were working on a... Um... Jack, we were working on a pouch for the Tear Blast. To buy him back if we really need to. What do we need for that? Last Sling. Rope Caster combo for bigger weapons. You use fire a lot. Cost efficient. It is a brutal resource grind to keep up with what you need. Needed goose skin. Just wood shards, goose skin. That's expensive, though. Uh, an eye out for geese. We were working on strong strike plus next, and then. And I don't know, head up towards dismount strike. We kind of need call mount for that to be particularly fun and useful. We'll put those together. Call mount, dismount, strike. And that gets a little nutty. Would you like to buy something today? Uh, no, I keep forgetting to do things. I still need to sell. Go oh, buy, sell. anymore we'll get more eventually we've got frost and we've got fire spec so i don't i don't know freeze and corruption that's not a lot of corruption i'm not going to swap out on my corruption bow for that I hate feeling like a hoarder. Like, I can't sell things that... I just need to sell them anyways. You get stuck on stuff like that, too. Going, but they're good, but you've already used what the you need. Justice Durval deserves. But they're good, but you've already used what you need. Are we really stopping for the history of Sunfall? Right now, story time. Incoming. <sighs> the history of Sunfall. After the vanishing of the Radiant Eriv and his cohort in the west, the Radiant Besadid ordered a mighty fortress built at the Sundom's farthest reach. His luminance chose to build atop ancient ruins, reasoning the ancients must have seized upon the location for its strategic value. 
of the ancients, their works of too smooth gray stone and strangely carved metal were collapsed or built over, and the catacombs sealed off. Only the stone ring, perhaps used for some unknowable ritual, was left in place to serve, as, serve the garrison as a training ground. Even though its builders and soldiers lived in fear of the land where the sun goes at night, the finished walls of the fortress were mighty and unshakable. His luminance and his high priest, the irrefutable Pashaman, aimed at sunfall under the blazing eye of the sun, and by the light it was good. None doubted the radiant Basadid's prudence, nor denied his lingering hope that his brother might one day be sighted again. But no great threat would come from the West in his lifetime, nor did it come for the next three generations, though records show the men of Sunfall fought many bandits and scroungers skulking in the rust wash, and a dangerous stampede of behemoths in the Long Burr. In time, Sunfall slipped from common memory until the sixth year of the eleventh Sun King's reign, when the radiant Marzid himself came to inspect it. In the desert heat, his luminance received a vision of an ornate citadel with a dome of metal so polished it would greet the dawn and catch the rays of the sun's last shining at dusk. At once, he ordered the dedication of the Sundom's resources to building the structure. After its construction, his luminance took the citadel as his summer palace, bringing with him many members of the Sun Court, nobles and artisans. In time, Sunfall became a city unto itself, and the source of great works such as Passion of the Tall Neck Among the Dunes, Turning Seasons at Bronze Flash, and Lament for Cinnabar Sands. The stone training ring was repurposed for shows of pageantry, where young blazons, where the Hunter's Lodge hawks could display the sun's dominance over the machines. Sunfall's prominence in the culture of the Sundom continued for many years, until the Sun King Marzid's untimely demise in the citadel he so treasured. For his procession back to the Alight, a line of torches was laid all the way across the Daybrink, so that over the days and nights of his bearing he might always go in light. The departed king's brother, the radiant Hivas, was occupied wholly with renewing the so soldiery of the Sundom, and with the old Sun King's passing, so too passed this chapter in Sunfall's history. In the early years of the 13th Sun King Jiran's reign, before the falling of his shadow, a particularly harsh season came upon the Sand Whisper Valley. Upon hearing that the storms could strip the very detailing off armor, he decreed that the strongest among his guards should be trained in the desert here, and named Kestrels. Indeed, Helis, who would become the most infamous of the Kestrels, was one of the first to survive his reforging by sun and sand here. In the fifteenth year of Sun King Jiran's reign, when the sacrifices in the Sun Ring were judged insufficient to calm the derangement of the machines, he presided over the blooding over th of the ring at Sunfall. A trapped behemoth was driven with spears and spurred over slaves of the Asaram and Utaru. When the beast turned upon the Kestrels, the Sun King stood and declared that the Sun, in its great generosity, would accept the sacrifice of faithless and faithful alike. So began a fearful era for Sunfall of sacrifices unending in its sun ring, and the citadel whispered of as a place where no light shone. Many upstanding citizens of the Sundom were taken inside its doors to disappear as surely as if they had journeyed to the Forbidden West. In the last days of Sun King Jiran's reign, Sunfall was in the charge of his kestrels and high priest, no longer answering to the Sundom as a whole. It was no surprise, then, that following the liberation of Meridian, Huron's loyalists sought refuge at Sunfall. As a fortress, it was impregnable, but cut off from the bounteous lands across the Daybrink, it was a city impoverished. So stood the stalemate. In the first year of the fourteenth Sun King, the Radiant Avad, and so stood Sunfall. Once built to protect the Sundom from the shadow of the West, it now sheltered a worse shadow, 
the false Karja who dwelt within. At the tip of a spear. A tip of a spear. Only the finest goods here. See for yourself. Your goods are the same as everyone else's goods. You'll like what I have for sale. I promise. I'll give you a good price. Machines or bandits try to get past me, they'll have a fight. Mark mm. my words. We pick up the side missions. Two for disorderly conduct last night. Three dog, is that you? The voice I barely NBC turn a profit even asked. in the best of times. Especially since I usually hand out what I can to those in need. Would you care for some fruit? Better enjoy it before someone runs tall. off with the rest of it. Has someone been stealing from you? Yes, almost every night. Not enough to force me to close shop, Does but it, huh? definitely enough to hurt. Top left, huh? I'll leave you that it's there. It's a little hard for me to see on my preview and... Ah. Well, thanks for the heads up on that. Hey, what happened to um, Alter Ego Lost Legionnaire? Have you found any sign of the thief? Just a couple of old rhines near the storehouse. Not much to go on. Why haven't the guards looked into it? The guards blame the wildlife, but I doubt they believe it. I guess they have more to worry about than a woman and her livelihood. He's wearing paint stirrers. Is there anyone you suspect? I've known most people here since childhood. None of them strike me as a food thief. You want to talk about other vices, however? You must live in the ruins of a Home Depot. I know how to track. I could look for the thief. Really? Thank you. You could start in my storehouse by the river. Someone must be desperate to steal rather than just ask me. I'll see what I can find. See for yourself. Find goods or a fair price. Don't pass up these goods. Genuine craftsmanship. You can't beat it. Where I hear Fallout's three dog all over the place in this game. Voice actor, voices NPCs all over this world. This barrel's been moved recently. There we go. Tracks. Mm. I could take all of that meat. I guess we're doing this random fetch quest, side quest. <laughs> in this game I really do it's it's the mounts all of the mounts which are not really supposed to be that dangerous I have a I have a real weak spot for them I seem to alert them a lot and then I get an entire herd on me and then I do stupid things and manage to get killed by the mounts the big stuff I got it with the mounts I don't want to fight you go away Please go away. I 
and they're getting killed. Or at least lose all my resources. She's still... She's, she's dead and she's still eating. She's still healing. <laughs> hey, know your strengths and know your weaknesses. The cool thing is we got to this spot and... Uh, I'm gonna do it again. No, 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 no. Come on. Stop. She's looking at the fruit. I can see it in all this grass. We got a checkpoint right when we got here. It's convenient. <laughs> it didn't work. All right, they're a little stronger than the striders and be fascinating if they were looking for me. of them did two of them die did like kill each other yes they did can my focus show me anything Talk about the fruit anymore, do you? Okay. Oh, we're following a fruit trail. It's unlike the regular trails. Where a bunch of bunnies go. Hey, Loy, I can't see him. You're gonna have to track him for me. Two for one. Good meat. I remember getting a little salty about the uh, fruit trail before. Because normally you get a trail that you can highlight, and this one's just a little different, but your brain is wired because the whole game's been um, setting you up a certain way, to play a certain way, and they change their own rules a little bit. My focus can help me. Is this the last of the fruit? No, this is the land of magical boars. Damn. Okay, boars, out of the way so I can have a look. Trail of footprints this time. Hey, there's something we can use. Too bad those boar are fake. Really, it's too bad. That would have been a lot of meat. get any skin. We need that goose skin. 
tough, but I'm used to it. The sound design in this game is mm, so good. Yeah, I heard that goose and knew it was nearby and went looking for it, expecting to see it somewhere nearby. Sure enough. Good enough that I knew it was a goose. Damn. How unfortunate. Well, if it's a setup. We're getting a little, I don't want to say low on wire, but I'd rather be well up over 500 instead of falling under it. Metal vessels? A little do some more of those too. There. That was it. I was I was missing a trigger by two feet. Oh, the sun. Forgive me. Forgive me. The game just doesn't have any boring fights. They're all exciting. My mind. I know we're supposed to talk to the guy we saved, but. Fatty meat! Fatty meat! Or not.
Thank you, Savage. You saved me from the sun's judgment. And we? did what now? I left the misery of Sunfall not long ago, knowing that I'd never be welcome back in Meridian. So I've been stealing food from a woman at Bright Market just to survive. But the Glint Hawks must be the judgment of the sun. You believe it attacked you because you were stealing. Why else? What if I beg forgiveness from the lady? Will that absolve me and save me from the Glint Hawks? Well, it would be a good I idea. I took care of the Glint Hawks, but yes, you should return and apologize. The woman you stole from is kind. She'll forgive you. The sun has spoken. Thank you again, Savage. May the sun light your way. <sighs> Great. People finally stopped calling me outcast, and now it's Savage. We could head down into, we could just head that way. It'll take us a little while to get back there, unless we're swimming across the water, which we could. Yeah, let's uh, swim across the water. Coming in. Patching it through. Hey! Air Warrior. Raiders. Battle stations. Hey, thank you for the host and raid. Cheers. What's up? EG, Fire Warrior. Julius the Chaser, where are you? It's a mystery. Chicken man. What's going on? Hey everybody, thanks for coming in. Kano, time to take over this place. Hey, cheers. Welcome, everybody. Drop a link in here to Fire Warrior. Please, everybody, check them out on Twitch. Show some love and drop a follow. Thank you for the raid. Host, just running around. We're making our way, actually, northward. And uh, once we get back up to zero dawn we might actually go in so sort of a mid mid late story big story dump if anyone's not familiar with the game uh when we get there there's gonna be a lot of spoilers starting to roll out until then it's probably safe if you haven't played it before but the game's too good to spoil so just a heads up Wow, what do we have here? You must hey, be Chicken Man, thank horrible. you for the follow. Welcome aboard. We're gonna swim. We're gonna swim. We're gonna swim north. Look out below! Thank you, BG. Cheers. So it's not a very exciting view. Do we have a dust storm while we're swimming across? Still the fastest way. Go up the switchbacks and and it's a brilliant game, isn't it? Well, I hope you thought so. Wow, what do we have here? BG the loser. Welcome aboard. Thank you for the follow. 
for joining us. I'm not sure if this is the only campfire like it, but this campfire here is not usable. It's just it's an extinguished campfire. Praise the sun. Not good at tracking kills up hills. Okay, you got away. It's the one that got away. Trade it for a beautiful view. And wow, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. And some lens flare. Kano, welcome aboard. Cheers. Thank you for the follow. Man, what a beautiful game. Where do we get to this view at the right time? Uh. Oh yeah, we're here again. <laughs> I came up here before and forgot where it was. I'm not running off the cliff. How are we supposed to talk to this guy? It's not that often we're here. We may as well while we're here. Remember your place, stranger. Why do I have a memory of this NPC we're about to talk to being a real dick? Are you Galeev, the healer? I had planned to spend the day gazing at the lands of my exile and feeling sorry for myself, but you're not from Sunfall, so this could be interesting. Yeah. I came from the tent city there. There's a sick girl. Her brother told me about you. The answer is no. What? No, I can't spare the medicine, nor my time oh, to yeah. administer it. Big dick. My resources are already spread thin, thin as the soiled cloths I have to use for dressings. Shall I shave off your beard with my spear? Why won't you help? Look at it from my perspective. What meager goods I can get must be smuggled in. That's expensive. The behemoth's share goes to the military. Of course, there are the demands he wants of the a citadel. Machine part, doesn't he? Yes, kestrels are so prone to sticky ends. What's left? That's for the nobles, who can pay well for my services. Look at it from my perspective. A little girl is sick. I think we are calling to each other across an ideological impasse. What's stopping me from just making you do it? I'd have to cause a situation. And you wouldn't harm the only healer disgraced enough to work for the Shadow Karja, would you? Well, we've only just met, but yes, it's tempting. And take it up with the Citadel. They decide who lives and dies. Nothing you can do would compare to my punishment if I use the last of my stock on a tent girl. <sighs> You're kind of an ass, healer. There's no cure for a conscience. But in this line of work, I've built up an immunity to it. And yet, if you feel so strongly about this one girl, 
Perhaps we can Talk make to the a merchant. Deal. It might be on the buyback. My charity for a Thunderjaw heart. That's not how charity works. No, it is how deals work. You'd <sighs> settle my debts for a while. Those parts aren't exactly easy to come by. As it happens, a Thunderjaw prowls the Valley of Omens, north and west of here. I know it well because they expect me to put its victims back together. Runaways, mostly. If I do this, it's not for you. Oh, I'm not expecting you to do it at all. But I'll be heading back to the Citadel later. Could you please shut up now? Let's see if the merchant... There's a merchant here, right? It makes me homesick. The merchant will have on the buyback the Thunderjaw heart that we just sold. <sighs> Damn. What else? The last ten things. Alright. I don't mind fighting another Thunderjaw, but it's still kind of... Just had one. We just sold it. It does hurt a little bit. I don't think we should head for Zero Dawn. Uh, where's... They're trying to send us over here. Is that where they want us to find a... Uh, what does that have to do with the Thunderjaw? And there'll be one over there. Do we actually have to kill one for that quest? Because I wanted to head up to Zero Dawn. To the plan. Select that. They'll have a. Oh. The mark. Normally, if you put a marker somewhere, it won't have a quest indicator on it. But certain things, if you put a marker on them manually, uh, they'll call out the waypoint that they're on. Right? That has the mission waypoint underneath it. We're not getting the. Here. We're not Can getting all the. Hear me? Help! Help! This has nearly got me. Goodbye. You want me to help you? Then you try to kill me. more seconds before someone hits us. Mounts. Mounts. Again. See? And, then, and it's a herd of them again. They're going to come. One, two, three. <laughs> Ravagers. Just, uh, we'll just, we'll just run into everything. Oh, yeah. No, 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 I 
need a few seconds. Got one. Finally. Thank you. Ah, oh, shit, and we can't stay. This is going so well. It's still tied down. That's a nice touch. Nice. We want to fight them all. That had potential, and then, uh, then it fell apart. Safe for a few minutes, anyway. On in. Already rescued it to men. Really low on medicinals. But... Sitting on a lot of shards, we could probably stock up on potions. Fill up what we things. don't have. Yo, Rango. What's up? Been here for about 10 minutes, but it's looking kind of rough. I didn't, I actually didn't even realize that was you saying that. I absorbed the comment. What's up, man? Hey. Greetings, man. Let's see. Why not? Since we're so low on medicinals, let's just a little frivolous, but I 
too much of some things. I'm not selling blades, I'm not selling wire. Figured you'd leave it for a bit while I get beaten up by every form of machine in the game. We have fought quite a few of them today. No stormbirds today though. Yeah. They're talking about Itamen. Easy this weekend. Hope you're taking it easy this weekend. Message for you, Commander. Just came in over a secure channel. Hey, Willis. Thank you. Thank you for the sub support, man. Happy Saturday. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thanks. So, oh! <coughs> Good times. You know how she likes to, to run on the... Basically, she wants to run across that, but we needed to jump to the first one. You remember when I died in the reverse of that? Two days, weeks ago? I tried to jump onto something that she just needed to step out onto. Got creamed. Try anything. You won't find us nearly as lenient as the apostates. Unlike Aloy, who is now dead. Our child so much for Zero Dawn. One day, our son can Again. She did her like and then stuck to the spot. I had no way to control it. And now it's just now she wants to walk across. Fine, Aloy. You do you. You do you. Hey Willis. The other side of the tower. Look for a vent. I say you've been here before. Obviously. Now, it's very important that you hear what I'm about to say. I've shown you the way in, but this humble vent marks a point of no return. Before you descend into the depths here, you should be fully committed, equipped, and focused. No distractions. If you have errands to run, do them first or hold your peace. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? You'll tolerate what I give you, Silence. I didn't ask you along for the ride. And it's not a complete point of no return. A partial, temporary point of no return. I'm heading down. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world where the machines came from, how the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death, a lifetime of failure, as year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. Until a Nora Huntress marched out of the savage east, and 
voila, for her. All the deepest secrets of the Earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Hold for identity scan. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Malfunction. 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 Are you kidding me? You don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! Access request acknowledged. Root command functions available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Emergency venting authorized. everything that will draw attention we won't have this place to ourselves for long now we last i checked i was the one risking my life down here yes fine now will you please get moving there's so much to learn in less time than i'd hoped guards are well trained welcome to project zero dawn Zero Dawn. We found it. Are you really so surprised? Go home now. Facility diagnostics detect multiple failures. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Have a look around. Hey, Ace. What's up? Yeah, there's some good bits here. Another incident. From lounge staff to admin. This morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovich is another example of reception's need for additional support. We appreciate that Zero Dawn is an immensely complicated project, but as the staff who serve on the front line, we're tired of being neglected. As we have already requested, we need human translators, fluent in Polish, for example. Security staff, who can subdue enraged embryologists, for example. And dermal sedatives calm persons who are screaming in Polish while hurling chairs and vases at reception staff, for example. Yes, most of the candidates are reasonably calm and well-behaved, but we need help handling the exceptions to that rule. Please respond. Oh, there's so much good stuff in here as we find out more about the project and who is part of it and What it was like getting here, beginning work on it, and what all went down. From reception to admin, we need support too. Reception staff continues to require additional support managing Zero Dawn candidates when they arrive at the facility. Many are frightened or confused. Some are highly agitated. These are not the sort of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them. At minimum, we need human translators. The Langbots are not sufficient and mild sedatives for the extreme cases. Any and all support would be welcome. Perhaps you could start by responding to one of these mails? No? That would be great. Can't be too prepared. Please take a seat and wait for your name to be called. A selection of beverages and snacks are available. Oh, good. Are we not able to pick up traps, maybe? Health potion. Are you kidding me? <sighs> well, I did stock up. I bought some. Just lazily bought some. Restock, or else. Lounge staff to admin. For the fifth time, please restock the lounge's selection of herbal teas. 
Might have to listen to one more egghead throw a tantrum because we're out of the organic cucumber mint or blackberry sage varietals. I'm going to lose it. Please respond. And this time, no tempest in a teapot or steep demand jokes, okay? Okay. Sound proofing. Lounge staff to admin. Would it be possible to improve the sound proofing between VR1 and the lounge area? Most of the candidates stay quiet during the presentation, but the ones who scream or sob can be plainly heard by candidates waiting their turn in the lounge. Just a thought. Oh my god. Please proceed into viewing room one for an important message regarding the purpose of your visit. What? What was this place? A holographic theater. CD and one data intact. Initiating playback. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. I am General Perfect. Harris, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Zero Dawn is a top secret super weapons program, the technological miracle that will save us from the Pharaoh Plague if Operation Enduring Victory can hold off the robots long enough. The reason I'm sure you've heard the rumors is that I'm the one who spread them, and they are all lies. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons program, and it will not save us. Nothing will save us. Here's why. By the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Our planet reduced to a barren sphere. Global extinction is inevitable. No matter how many we kill, the robots just keep exponentially making more. If we had their deactivation codes, we could shut them all down. The entire swarm. But since their cryptographic protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, cracking a code set would take half a century. At best, we've got 16 months. Not exactly what you'd call a survival option. The destruction of a biosphere is not the sort of apocalypse you can wait out in a fallout shelter or a space station. There will be no Earth left to reclaim. Just a lifeless, toxic rock with several million pharaoh robots on it, hibernating waiting for something to eat. This is the horrible truth behind the lies of Operation Enduring Victory. My lies. Lies designed to inspire millions of innocents to sacrifice themselves in battle. Why? One reason. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Zero day. The day that life on Earth ceases to exist is coming fast. It cannot be stopped. The hope of Zero Dawn is that something new might come after. But I will leave it to Elizabeth Sobek to shine that thin ray of light into the darkness. Harris, out. Yeah, that's bad Life news. Life didn't <clears throat> cease to exist. He said it could oh, not be anyway. stopped. But it was. Somehow... Somehow Elizabeth saved us. I've, I've got to keep looking. Find out how she did it. It goes without saying that this place is filled with spoilers. I know I mentioned it a few minutes ago, but... Kestrels. If that wasn't they enough. Through the vents. Let nothing stop you from learning the truth. Spread out! If it moves, kill it! What is this place? Tomb? Aloy, up means up. Up! Oh, come on. What's your problem? Aloy. Jeez, that's the problem. I guess that means I'm the problem. 
Get the girl. Actually, get the the prompt right there. Oh, she screwed it up. That's unfortunate. Okay, where's the? Damn. You hate it when you have a prompt and it's right on the edge. And when you go to use it, you missed it. Bunch of good stuff. All right, uh, we're not I know what order we're starting in. Some of these things go together, and thing with Suzanne Alpert, environmental scientist. Doctor, I'm sorry, I wasn't uh... just stating your name. What were you thinking about, Doctor? Nothing the general said, not really. I was on the Syzygy East response team in 2051, just after the second earthquake compromised the reactor. I still dream about it, after all these years. The red zone spreading on the imaging, slowly, so slowly, like a hand opening its fingers. Your involvement in that event is why you were asked for by name. Really? That's interesting. Because nothing worked. Nothing could grow there again. It was a catastrophic failure. But the red zone is a blip compared to global-scale biomass reduction. The biosphere and hydrosphere will collapse, render the Earth uninhabitable long before the robots finish us. Enduring victory can't buy time against that. So, you'd better show me what Zero Dawn really is. Yep, she's smart. She's got it partly figured out. Counselor Guidelines. For debriefing after presentation one. Candidates must be allowed to ask questions and be given the necessary time to fully absorb the information they have received. It is important to be aware that candidates have just been exposed to triggers for severe mental and emotional trauma. Do not assume silence or outward calmness indicates acceptance. It is essential to stress that all other options for combating the Pharaoh Plague and preserving the continuation of human life have been considered and found unworkable communicate this fact calmly but clearly and firmly familiarize yourself with data on the catastrophic environmental impact of nuclear engagements versus the swarm addendum, addendum b1 and unfeasibility of maintaining life in orbital lunar or undersea structures addenda c1 2 and 3 so that you can counter candidates objections in depth if a candidate asks for time alone to review supplementary information, allow this without hesitation. Be sure to inform security personnel so the candidate can be monitored for attempts at self-harm. Candidates should only be cleared to proceed to presentation two if you believe their mental state is sufficiently stable. Note that real-time support will be available via your focus. Security and medical crisis teams are data corrupted. We saw presentation one back there. I'm sure you now understand the urgency of why we brought you here, Ms. Okilo. Captain Okilo, are you trying to thank me for not resisting? I believe we couldn't negotiate a diplomatic solution. 
when it came to my country's lithium, it was always a swarm that would be sent to negotiate. Metallurgic International, U.S. Robot Command. The markings changed, but the robots were the same. You have had considerable experience in human-robot conflict. Yes, and I've got the prosthetic limbs to show it. Yet I continue to face this horror, even though the challenge was great. Cyber warfare. I thought Zero Dawn would be a, a Manhattan project to generate the deactivation codes. With the resources I had, I estimated code breaking to be a hopeless endeavor. I was almost looking forward to being proved wrong. Unfortunately, your estimation was correct. As your General Hera said. So then, you did not bring me here to commiserate. What is left? Interview, Ron Felder, PhD Aerospace Look, Engineer. Uh, let's cut the mystery. You're building a colony ship. It's obvious. And it's not gonna fly. I mean, literally. Remember the Odyssey? That multinational heap of space junk that's been in graveyard orbit since 57? That went nowhere real slow. And you have to get But it could show up in a sequel, fast. maybe. I, do you maybe. have any idea the immensity of the challenge to prep a new colony ship in time? To be clear, I'm not a worker on the project. Do you even understand how few people it could save? The whole generation ship concept is, is not gonna happen. It's the first thing you'd abandon in favor of embryonics. Uh, for that kind of storage, we're talking a lot of bulk, a lot of power, a lot of resources. So even if you do it, even if you build it and point it at Sirius X, there's no room for people on that thing, all right? If you could try to remain calm. But you people are crazy if you think you're getting off this rock. No one's getting off. Medical. He was smart enough to understand, but he couldn't handle it. He wasn't even... He wasn't even ready to get the next information dump. PhD, Molecular and Cellular Biology. Interview, Tom Page. That is accurate, yes. So these mechanical monstrosities, they don't just kill people. They feed off them? Not just people. All organic matter. Every living thing dissolves into nutrients. Millennia of evolution liquefied. The miracle of life reduced to bloody biofuel. In a word, yes. Who did this? Pharaoh? Yeah. That asshole. Yeah. Is he here? Mm. No, doctor. Please, tell him Tom Pike wants a word. Now, get off! Get off! Please! You get Ted Pharaoh in here! I would love it. We dig him up and kill him all over again. PhD, Art History and Museum Studies. I think there is some mistake. Dr. I don't understand why I was brought here. Why would you show me these things? I know that there's already a lot to take in. In the waiting area, I was seated with a Nobel laureate in biophysics and a monk, I think. He spoke neither English nor Mandarin. It is very strange. And General Harris? What was he talking about? The robot swarm? The pharaoh plague? I understand it is terrible, but it really cannot be stopped. Why tell us this? There are people in Shanghai, my friends, my family. They have joined Operation Enduring Victory already. It is for nothing? We will all die? We're going to be able to answer some of these questions. I just want to know why I am here. It doesn't make sense to me. You were brought here because of your skill set. No, that can't be right. I am an art historian. I know Dutch masters, Japanese calligraphy, uh, Gerhard Richter. What does that matter now? Might matter again one day. Travis. Travis Tate, data security consultant. Want to discuss? Oof. So mama, she was right. Pardon? My mother, she took her Bible real serious. Not just Texas bubble serious, Pentecostal serious. Favorite chapter? Revelations. Now, I didn't always understand her on account of all that speaking in tongues and such, but when she did use her words, 
There was always end times this and the leak of fire that on kind of sinful lifestyles. Speaking of which, mind if I smoke a tobacco cigarette? Sorry, darling. My taste run classic. Compliments your team tracked me down. Been a price on my head 18 months now. Sterling Malky was me, don't mind admitting. Been plenty of snakesters chasing the bounty, too. But I kept the zigging to their zag. How'd you finger me? I believe Dr. Sobek listed you as an alpha candidate. Priority snatch and grab. <laughs> Always suspected she had a little thing for me. Hey, I don't suppose you got real coffee in this place. You know, blood coffee? Conflict cappuccinos? Mr. Tate, I'm clearing you to proceed. Just go. Yeah, she's clearly a big fan of his. Interview Brad Andak, formerly of Faro Automated Solutions. You previously worked for Faro Automated Systems. Systems. On the chariot line self-replication routines. I came here thinking this was a, a rendition. When your people took me, I, I thought, about time. I've been trying to swallow the guilt every day since, since, uh... Would you like to take a moment? No, 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 I, I just... I really hoped Zero Dawn was a way to undo it all. My work. And I'm sorry to say I was ever proud of it, but that could really sell a concept. And, and, and in the labs, in the, the, the light of creation, that first test run... When, when you saw they understood their own structures, could rebuild themselves from memory and light? There were no limits. God, there were no limits. This'll do. Okay. Oh, there's a big lore dump in there. There's more. Right, can or can't? Keep the fire striker a bit. Two data intact. Initiating playback. Elizabeth Sobeck. You've heard the bad news, and it's all true. Presentation two. The Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? Here we go. This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn. To create a super-intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute the biosphere. An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. We call it Gaia. Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions of Gaia's mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Now these aren't AIs, but make no mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. And that's just the start. We don't have to build the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system is that it can build itself. Now over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris talked about. And build the transmission arrays to broadcast them, shutting down the feral robots for good. 
how Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisoned seas, to the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stocks, to rewilding the Earth with animal life, and then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings spawned at cradle facilities around the globe will partake of Apollo, the vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us, our world, and most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. Like Ted it's Sparrow. not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia, we can give it a future. Join me and help make that future real. The whole earth destroyed, but then remade? Yes. By a machine. A machine of creation. Elizabeth did this. For life. For us. But why Hades then? If it was part of Gaia, how did it end up in the wreckage of a pharaoh robot? And why does it want to kill me? And Apollo, the archive of knowledge, what happened to that? I'm as confused as you are. Maybe the answers lie ahead. Yeah, what happened indeed. Ted Farrow just embodies some of the worst human traits. Greed and extreme hubris. selection. No, oh, come on. Is the data point. Wait for the mission to go away. Let's rescan this. Try that again. You. You are now in possession of information regarding the true nature and purpose of Project Zero Dawn, classified far above top secret. As such, we regret that you cannot be allowed to leave this facility. There are three options available to you at this point. Please consider each carefully. Trained counselors are standing by to assist you in making your choice. Number one, participation. You will be assigned to a sub-project team based on your area of expertise. You should be aware that the way forward will be difficult and the project's outcome is uncertain. You will be expected to work a minimum of 80 hours per week and your communications with family members will be strictly limited and monitored in real time. Upon successful completion of the project, you and your immediate family, or two persons of your choosing, will be transferred to the Elysium Sealed Habitat to live out the remainder of your natural lives. Option two, indefinite detention. Should you choose to dis decline participation in Project Zero Dawn, you will be confined indefinitely. You will be given 48 hours to reconsider, after which your decision to refuse participation will be considered irrevocable. Every reasonable effort will be made to make your term of confinement as comfortable as possible, but you will not be permitted contact with the outside world, and death within 18 months due to the Pharaoh Plague is inevitable. When the Zero Dawn facility is abandoned, detainees who wish not to opt for medical euthanasia will be released. Into a barren world filled with pharaoh machines, ready to recycle you. Option three, medical euthanasia. The information you have just received understandably calls into question the purpose of continuing to live. If you would prefer to end your life at this point, pain-free medical euthanasia is available. A 48-hour waiting period is required, during which time you may instead opt for participation or confinement. Please notify a counselor when you are ready to make your choice, 
or if you have further questions. Yep, not kidding around. Counselor Guidelines, Part 2. For debriefing after Presentation 2. It is vitally important that candidates choose to participate in Project Zero Dawn voluntarily and knowingly, without additional coercion and without value judgment on the part of the counselor. Infirm for candidates that they were selected due to their skill sets and accomplishments, emphasize that their dedicated participation in Zero Dawn will increase the project's chances of success. Frame participation in Zero Dawn as an opportunity to respond actively in the face of an overwhelming threat. Candidates may question the fairness of their selection. Validate such objections as normal, even admirable responses. Emphasize the value of candidates' expertise to the future, not just of humanity, but terrestrial life as a whole. Likewise, candidates may balk at the morality of extending their lifespans and those of loved ones beyond zero day. Validate their hesitation. Acknowledge that while the reward of Elysium is not fair, it will be earned. If possible, redirect their ethical misgivings towards greater commitment to the project. When candidates challenge the plausibility of Project Zero Dawn, permit them to review Dr. Sobek's presentation as many times as they wish and to allow to access to supplemental articles G01 through P20, allow them to suspend the interview to fully process this documentation. A significant minority of can candidates will elect for medical euthanasia. It is important to receive this decision kindly and without judgment. Advise them of the 48-hour waiting period during which counselors will be available to discuss their decision. Emphasize that euthanasia will not occur without repeated consent when the procedure is scheduled to take place. No one will be euthanized against her or his will. Candidates who elect indefinite detention must be informed that they have 48 hours to reverse their decision, after which the decision data corrupted. The decision becomes irrevocable. Brad Andak, interview two. Of course I'll do it. To be given the opportunity to rebuild what I... Uh, the, the, the damage that I, well, I... I don't feel worthy of it, but, but I, I will do it, absolutely. I want to stress that this was never about your culpability. Uh, it, it is to me. Dr. Sobek, Margo, they were smart to get out of Pharaoh when they did, but, but not one of us took it as a warning sign. It, it just told ourselves they weren't cut out for the BTRI cabals. But that's the, the better than rapid innovation. I, a better at competing, better than the next guy, a, a better killing machine. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing how a century and a half of science fiction did nothing to swerve our species from the path of doom? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that life. I mean, I, I will work hard, twice as hard to earn this for, for my family to have a place in Elysium. I never thought I <clears throat> that there could be uh, atonement. Well, good luck, Brad. Interview to Suzanne Alpert. If you're still nauseous. No, the inhibitors have kicked in. I can't feel the back of my tongue. I wish I could tell you I'd believe in this. But the damage is too great, too extensive, too complete. With all respect to Dr. Sobek's work at Miriam, no. No, life doesn't always find a way to keep going. Sometimes it never comes back. Haven't you seen Jurassic like Park? Like the city east. Like the Congo. Like Timor. Like us. That's our reward? A buried city full of terminal patients waiting out the clock? You grow old together with your loved ones in safety. I don't have loved ones. I suppose I could start a family. I'm afraid not. All inhabitants of Elysium will be medically sterilized. <laughs> a habitat capable of sustaining a starting base of 2,000 individuals for up to 100 years is a huge challenge, Dr. Alpert. If the population grows instead of diminishes, everyone will be dead inside 30 years. I knew it. I just couldn't bring myself to say the words. I'm sorry. Finish it. 
medical euthanasia. I want no part of this. I just want it over. I see. Protocols require a 48-hour waiting period, after which... Unfilter decision interview. Is he to make sure I behave this time? Security, for your protection. Would you like to discuss how you're feeling? Sure. I'll tell you. Surprised. No, flabbergasted. Like my old man would say, flabbergasted. That vein pumping in his forehead. I thought. I thought you people were just completely underprepared for a space flight project. But now I can see it's worse. Much worse. Sobek is a total fantasist, a, a dangerous fantasist. He's kind of blue skying. It's. <gasps> Jesus. I'm sorry we wasted each other's time. I'm ready to leave now. He still doesn't I'm get it. That's not possible. <laughs> Everything you're talking about here isn't possible. I recommend you read the documents regarding your options. I've seen enough. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you're not. What are you? What? You don't. Uh, get your hands off me! Not going anywhere. Ended shackles. Weird little random bit of loot. Um, and there's just nothing back here. That's weird too. Make sure we're not missing any bits as we go. No lore behind us. Data points. Intruder! Get her! Whatever you do, don't die now. Try me now. Hey. Oh, they're dropping a lot of traps that I don't have room for. Christina Suve. Zero Dawn. It is art, in a way. An expression on the grandest scale. But there is so much unfairness. Why was I chosen? Was it decided by committee? By algorithm? My family will be saved because I happen to graduate in art history? Is this right? <laughs> Dr. Suve? Christina Suve? Yes. Someone got used out of their art history degree, finally. 
I met a man, another historian, his fields of Bauhaus and the new materialists. But he once attended one of my talks. Another unfair chance. Of all the many people in their auditorium, that we should both be here now. And yet, I feel more accepting of my fate. No, it is not fair, not at all. But for the sake of my family, for the sake of art, Art is alive. It must be able to speak from beyond history and echo in the future, not perish into oblivion. This opportunity, I must do this. <clears throat> Tom Pegg. I hashed it out with them, what the point of Artemis was. I made it clear I wasn't on board for a global zoo. We haven't exactly proved ourselves to be great custodians in the past few thousand years. Hey, like, so the idea of a I've reconstituted of that. biosphere. Okay. Yeah, focus. Stop. Wow, it's horrifying, isn't it? A complete horror show. We have no right to take a best guess at this stuff. But the alternative? Nothingness. For there to have been all this and then nothing. And with Charles Ronson running the show, I respect him. He's got a passion to it. He's hot-blooded. So I said I'll do it. I'll put my all into this, literally. When the project is done, I'll take the medical option, thank you. The counselor said I might change my mind. I told him that he didn't know me very well then. Mm. For life's sake, I'll do the dirty work. But I want no part of this pathetic, attenuated future on offer. I'm an outdoors man. Never did like the feel of solid state lighting on my skin. And a wee bit of a claustrophobe, anyway. Travis Tate. Now, those lame FBI and black hats at Mockingbird back in the day, I enjoyed schooling them. But maybe I went in too hard on this poor counselor. She was cute and just going down a checklist after all. Couldn't expect her to see how ridiculous Zero D's ambitions are. God's own budget thrown at a kid playing with a hologram sculptor. Palms up, honey. I'm just calling it like it is. Hey, look, Mom, I'm making nature. <laughs> now, if nature is so important, why not let nature take its course? Extinction? That's natural. Zero Dawn? No, ma'am. That ain't. Heck, it's so unnatural it'd be called an abomination back home, and you know it. That's why you're hiding it. Meanwhile, my little honey of a counselor, she's munching the inside of her cheek. Bad habit. <laughs> she chewed one of her nails, too. Just one. Not your day, was it, little sweet pea? Saw her quota slipping away. Said, I assume you intend to decline the assignment, Mr. Tate. <laughs> you kidding me? 18 months hard labor in exchange for 30 years lounging around Elysium watching porn? <laughs> Sign me up. Travis Tate. We're going to take a break. I'll be back in about six and a half minutes. I'm going to play one song, and we'll continue. Scratch check on the dogs. Grab some pretzels or something to munch on here for a few. In a couple minutes. Stay tuned. 